good afternoon we are going to discuss the combing operation now the combing operation the is preceded by a pre combing stage what is there in pre combing stage we prepare lap and these laps are nothing but their feed package so to produce a lap which is basically a feed package for the comber there is a lap i have kept on the left hand side you can have a look if this lap if you see it is basically a compressed sheet of cotton and it is rolled in a cylindrical form so this sheet if you look at it if i show you you can now it is clear that this part is the sheet and this sheet is rolled in the form of a cylindrical package this is called lap and this lap is the feed package for the combing machine so first of all we need to know how to transform slivers into a lap like this slivers cannot be directly fed to the combing machine we have to make a lap which looks like this and then these laps are fed on the machines which is subsequently combed so first thing that is going to discuss is how this roll is formed one thing which is important about this sheet is that the sheet has to be very very uniform in terms of mass per unit length along the length of the roll or also along the width this is also very important that is it has to be uniform along the length of the entire roll and it has to be also uniform along the width of the lap both are important let us go to the next slide transformation of slivers into lap so to make a lap the feed material is sliver that we produce on carding machines and maybe we have given it to one drop em passage so still it is in the form of a sliver and you are all familiar with the sliver so the sliver is the feed material for lap forming machines so transformation of slivers into lap what do you do here multiple slivers are fed as an array to the machine so we are feeding simultaneously large number of slivers maybe 12 maybe 16 maybe 18 they are all fed together and they are arranged parallel to each other then these slivers are drafted why do you draft them because by drafting the slivers will lose their identity as a round shape will be lost and they will become a thin sheet the sheets is transformed into a roll by winding at a constant rate on a spindle here is the lap spindle on which the entire roll or sheet has been rolled the when we want to produce it another important thing is that the lap has to be formed under pressure you all know that cotton is a very floppy material so but we have to make a compact sheet otherwise the diameter will be too much and the content of the package will be less so what we do that we while winding it on the lap spindle we have to apply pressure on it and the second thing is that as far as possible we have to generate little tension in the sheet so that 
the sheet is rolled under tension at the same time we apply pressure on it so that it remains compressed and we can finally produce a package where we have compressed sheet of cotton and while we keep rolling it at some stage when the certain length has been wound or we have gained certain uh, weight the machine stops automatically and this slab that we have formed is then removed from the machine. So, this is how a sliver is transformed into a lap. So, the feed is the sliver and the output from the machine is a roll like this which is known as lap. The other lap you may be familiar with that we produced on blow room which are much larger than this and they are fed to the carding machine to produce fiber. But nowadays most of the blow room do not produce the lab because we have chewed feed system in the blow room where tubs from blow rooms are directly fed to the carding machine. So, lab preparation on blow room is declining day by day, but for the combing machine we have to produce these labs fast. Now, the combing process or we can say pre combing process basically there are two processes one is lab doubling process and the other one is sliver doubling process. So, in the lab doubling process it employs basically a sliver lab machines followed by a ribbon lab machines. So, as of now you do not know what are these two machines, but you only remember that there are two machines sliver lab machine and ribbon lab machine using those two machines we can produce labs which are suitable for combing. The other one is sliver doubling process. Here the normal draw frame provides the first process and the sliver from the draw frame which where it has already undergone some amount of parallelizations and improvement in the uh, uniformity. These are then fed to a machines and then these slivers are transformed into a lab. So, when sliver doubling machines are basically therefore, the feed material is drawn sliver and then these drawn slivers are combined together and little draft is given to it to form a uniform sheet and then the sheet is rolled in the form of a lab. Now, you look at a sliver lab machines a sketch has been given and what we see here is that there are two creels, creel 1, creel 2 and then these creels are basically means to feed the sliver cans. From each sliver cans a sliver is removed and a number of slivers will move along the table of this creel and it will reach the drafting system where these slivers are given little bit of draft. How many slivers we feed here? The number is given here that we feed 12 slivers on creel 1 and we feed another 12 slivers on creel 2. So, 12 and 12 24 slivers will be fed. These 12 slivers they move parallelly and they enter the drafting system. We will discuss the drafting system and they are drafted a bit and then the drafted sheet from creel 1 and the drafted sheet from creel 2 they get combined together and then they are transformed into a lab. So, what we have on the machine is wave deflecting plates because after drafting the sheet 
that is generated, we can call it a wave and these waves needs to change their path and therefore, we have deflecting plate and then we have a wave table and then lap winding unit. The basic units of the machines is the basic machine frame, there is a drafting unit, drop, drive to the drafting system, a winding head where the sheet is wound in the form of a roll and then we have electrical cabinet. The sliver lap and sliver doubling machines are fitted with creel, the kind of creel that you have seen here with two feed tables and when we will discuss the ribbon lab machine which will come later on. The ribbon lab machines, the feed to the ribbon lab machine is a lap again. So, several laps we feed to the ribbon lab machine and then again drop them together a little bit and combine them together and then again roll into a lap. So, you may be wonder that why do I need a ribbon lap machines, I have already formed a lap, then what is the need to combine the laps again? We will discuss about this later on, but right now you remember that we can have sliver lap machines, the name itself implies the slivers are transformed into a lap, so therefore, it is a sliver lab machine. Sliver doubling machines is in a way similar to sliver lab machines, the only difference is that we can feed more number of slivers there. So, construction wise sliver lab machine and sliver dub doubling machines are quite similar. River lab machine construction wise quite similar to the sliver lab machines, the only difference is that there is no creel to feed the slivers there. We only have feed package which is a lap in the ribbon lab machines and the output package is also a lap. Okay. Let us go from here. What is important here is the feeding part of the slivers is done by the creel and you may be familiar with the creel like we feed slivers, card slivers on a draw frame, we also use the creel. So, the creel is basically similar this in construction to the kind of creel which is used to feed slivers, card slivers on draw frame. It is very simple uh, the creel part that is the slivers are basically pulled from the can and sometimes there may be guiding rollers through which we can guide them and several slivers as they approach the drafting unit, they converge together and they, they enter the drafting system. So, a typical drafting unit consists of four rollers as shown in this diagram. So, it is basically four over four drafting system. Bottom roller diameters is 32, the top roller diameters are 39 mm and the draft which is given here is around 1.3 to 3 that is the draft range. Also there is a pressure bar which is here and the diameter is 16 mm. All right. The pressure on the top rollers can be varied and it can go up to 1600 Newton per nip and draft can be varied in the three zones uh, depending upon our need and if the results of the drafting is that by having little draft we will be able to improve the orientation of the fibers in the sliver, they will be parallel to each other. Keeping a low draft has advantage, the advantage is that as you may be knowing that during drafting 
the drafting irregularity that is generated that is proportional to the draft. So, more draft we have more irregular the saliva becomes, but though there is a uh, compensating you know, phenomena because of the doubling action that we give. So, when you feed several solvers together in a drafting unit, there are two things that can happen. One is more slivers, I have to give more draft and that means more irregularity, but at the same time more slivers means the reduction in irregularity because of doubling also will be less. Now, these two phenomena will work together and the net result decides whether there will be a net improvement of irregularity or not. But generally it has been found that there are possibilities where the by increasing doubling we actually increase the short term irregularity into the in the saliva. So, therefore, here in the case of combing as we discuss about the combing machine in the subsequent lectures you will come to know that is uniformity of this lap sheet across the width is very, very important. Here the uniformity along the length and across the width both are very, very important and therefore, if we want to reduce the irregularity that is mass variations, short term mass variations in that case the lesser draft is better in a way. There are some other reasons why we keep less draft that also we will come to know when we will discuss the combing machine in more details. Okay. Now, let us go to the next unit that is basically lap winding unit. Lap winding units a diagram is shown here, it can it, it shows that the drafted sheet of slivers. So, when the slivers a bunch of slivers have undergone some drafting, it is basically a sheet now. This sheet moves and it passes over few calendar rollers. The purpose of calendar rollers are to compress the sheet. So, so the thickness reduces and there is, there is some coherence between the fibers. So, it has some strength because of, of the pressure that the sheet receives as it passes through the candle rollers. So, one pair of candle roller is not enough to really compress the sheet and therefore, we need multiple candle rollers. So, that the sheet gets compressed properly and then the sheet goes and here is a lap tube on which the sheet will be now wound. The another diagram is also shown here and as I told you drafted sheet passes through four candle rollers and two winding rollers the lap tube holding device and lap weighing device. That is you see look at here that these are the candle rollers and these two are the winding rollers. Here is the lap spindle or lap tube and the green circle indicates the lap. Now, there are some other lever you see it here along with the piston whole purpose of this is to basically apply pressure on the lap during its formation. What happens with the increase in diameter of the lap? This weighting frame the whole part of this part from here to there is known as weighting frame that is basically is supposed to apply load on the lap spindle so that the lap is produced under some pressure. With increase in diameter of the lap, the weighing frame rises and the pressure increases. I will explain that to you now. 
Now, what happens as the lab grows in diameter, this frame, this is this part is pulled, and therefore, what happens? This piston is moved in this direction. As a result, here is as a compressed air is there. So, if we lab has to, as the lab grows in diameter, this has to move inside, and as a result, you need more and more force to do this. The net effect is the pressure on the lab keeps on increasing as the lab increases in diameter. Why do you need so? If we go to the next slide, this will be clear. Now, let us say in this diagram what we are showing that there are two rollers, lab rollers of same diameter D1, and then there is a lab of diameter D2. And let us say that we are applying a force P acting at the center of the lap. Now, if this is so and D3 indicates this distance as shown in the diagram and alpha is this angle you can see in the diagram. Now, what is this angle alpha? From the geometry of this region, we can say that sin alpha is basically d 3 by d 1 plus d 2 by 2. So, this is d 1 by 2, this is d 1, this is d 2 by 2. So, sin alpha is this divided by this and hence it is 2 d 3 upon d 1 plus d 2. And what is the relationship between P and Q? Q is the reaction force. The contact points are between the lab and the lab rollers, uh, they are here. So, as if the force P acts vertically downwards, the reaction force will be acting on the lab sheet, which is basically Q. So, 2 q cos alpha is going to balance the downward force which is p and therefore, we can write q is equal to p by 2 cos alpha. So, cos alpha as you all know is root about 1 minus sin squared alpha and therefore, if we put the value of sin alpha here we get this equations and q is actually the effective force which is acting on the lap while the lap is being formed. And what we see here that Q, how it is connected to P and other parameters. For a given P, D 3 remains constant, D 1 does not change. What is changing in this equation is basically D 2. If the D 2 increases, what will happen? Q will actually decrease. So, when the lap grows in diameter, the pressure on it is decreasing. To keep the pressure constant, Q, if P is constant, Q will decrease. This is what is going to happen. So, you have to avoid this and hence either P will needs to be increased as lab grows in diameter, so that Q remains constant. Since lab has to grow in diameter, and therefore, the only way to keep Q constant is to keep on increasing P. That is what we must do. And hence, this mechanism that is shown here will be able to achieve this, because as the lab grows in diameter, this pivoting labor will move in this direction. As a result, the piston will be pushed into this chamber where pressurized air is there and therefore, the P value is going to increase gradually and as a result Q will remain constant uh, whatever value we set and that will give me a lap which is very very compressed and therefore, it will not be too voluminous and it has advantage that is what we do. 
there are some other mechanism people have uh, you know developed some companies have developed that is the lab is I can now remove the lab that is lab drive and lab compressions. The lab belt is here is a belt you see the belt is motor is there it is running this and then it has a continuous belt going like this and this lab belt is guided tension and driven by six deflection pulleys. So, if we see the pulleys these are the pulleys 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. These pulleys are the deflection pulleys. The lab belt drives the lab and the belt is driving the lab at its circumference. So, here earlier we have seen there are two rolls lab rollers on which the lab is placed and the lab roller rotates and therefore, the lab rotates it is a friction drive there. Here the difference is that there is no uh, metallic roll on which the lab is resting here the lab belt is actually doing the job of driving the lab sheet. The, the pneumatic cylinder is still is there and which tensions the lab belt by means of a tensioner pulley 70. Because if I want to increase the uh, pressure effective pressure on the lab with time then the mechanism by which we used to do there earlier similar mechanism also exist here and the tension pulley will be with the lever shown here is going to push this piston into the pneumatic cylinder in a similar fashion and so the pulley has to change its position in order to push the cylinder push the sorry piston. With increasing lab diameter the lab density is varied by varying the pressure control that is there is a system by which we can keep changing the pressure on the lab these are adjustable now and the pressure the effective pressure on the lab can be changed uh, as the lab grows in diameter. So, earlier the pressure used to reduce with time which is not good that means the initial layers will be very tightly wound and the layers which will be formed later will be loosely wound and therefore, the whole lab will not have uniformity in terms of density from layer to layer density of the cotton sheet. So, what we needed is either to keep the pressure on the sheet constant all the time during its formation or one can think that I can increase the pressure as the lab grows in diameter. So, that also is possible. The width of this belt on which the lab is running corresponds to the lab width. The belt is wrapped around the lab throughout the lab build up. So, the drive goes from the belt to the lab and the entire lab is in contact with the belt. The speed of the butt entering the belt system is identical to that of the belt. Is the butt basically means the lab sheet. So, obviously, because it is in contact with the belt and it gets its drive from the belt. So, whatever is the surface speed or linear speed of the belt same is the speed of the lab sheet also. The pressure is distributed over the surface of the lab circumference by the lapping belt. This is the advantage of the belt driven lab. See the surface area of contact between the belt and the lab is much larger than the previous diagram that you have seen where the contacts are at only two points. If the lab is resting on lab rollers then it is a two point contact whereas, in this case there is a contact over an area because the 
belt is in contact with the lab over a larger area. So, the possibilities of transferring the force or the, or the motion is much better in this case. The path of the belt around the lap resembles in cross section of the Greek letter omega and hence the name has been given omega lap and this has been developed by a company called Ritter. This company has developed this technique and they call it omega lap. The lapping belt is in constant contact with the raw material being processed as I discussed earlier that the advantage is the speed transmission is much better because larger area of contact between the lap and the lapping belt. So, that advantage is there in this case. Next, we will discuss the ribbon lab machine. So, whatever we have discussed is all about sliver lab machines, feed is sliver and the output is a lap. Now, the ribbon lab machine what do you do? The feed is a lap. So, these are basically lap that you have seen earlier. The lap that we produce there, they become the feed package of this machine and we do not, this machine can handle 6 laps. So, it is a constructional view. So, the lap is here, the drafting system is here, there is a turn table and then basically there is a lap forming unit over here again. So, lap forming unit we have already discussed. This lap is unrolled and is given little draft again. So, if this machine has got 6 heads, so that we feed 6 laps one after the other, the lap sheet from 6 heads are doubled together in a sandwich fashion. So, what we do advantage in this case is that after little bit of drafting that we give to this lap here, then 6 lap sheets that we get drafted on these machines they move like this as shown here. This is from one head, let us say this is from head 1, this is from head 2, this is from head 3 and there will be some more like that, there will be 6 heads and the sheet is turned like this by turning plates and here as they move forward, this sheet moves on the top of this sheet and this sheet moves on the top of these two sheets and there are some more heads here. So, therefore, finally what we get is a sandwich mixing of 6 drafted sheet and this gives you what? The transverse evenness is much better. Combining slivers together really do not improve the transverse evenness. Transverse evenness will be better if we can combine the sheets one after the other like, like this. In that case, the transverse evenness is much better and you will see that there is a great significance of transverse evenness of the sheet when you actually go for combing operations. So, this machine is also used in some industry. So, ribbon lab machines basically input is a lab, output is also a lab. The advantage is by sandwich mixing will be able to improve the transfer evenness of the final lab. Otherwise, the construction wise, working wise, the machines are simple, uh, there is not much uh, difference from the previous machine. Now, if we compare between the sliver lap and ribbon lap machines, then we see that both of them can process fibers up to 1 up 1 by 5 width of an inch or even 5 a little shorter or longer can be processed. There is no difficulty. The main difference you see here that here doubling is 24, here doubling is 6. 
doubling means here 6 lap doubling and in this case this is 24 sliver doubling. So, this doubling is of sliver and here these are of lap. Dropped in this case is usually kept in this range 1.31 to 3.03. River lab machine, it can vary between 3.48 to 8. So, roughly you can say 3.5 to 8, that is the typical range in which the draft can be given. Tube length to 50 mm, here it is 300 mm. It may vary a little bit from manufacturer to manufacturers, but on an average, this is the length. The lab weight, typical 25 kg, here it is 20 kg. So, here the weight also some variation in weight is also possible. Someone can make 20 kg, someone can make 22 kg. So, this little adjustment or flexibilities are there on the machine. The delivery speed also can vary. Speeds wise, they are more or less similar 85 to 100, 85 to 100 meters per minute, that is delivery rate. And production power machines can be up to 480 kilo per hour, 480 kg per hour. The actual production rate has to be set by the user of these machines. Someone can set at 400, someone can set at 350 or 450. It all depends because the decision is taken based on the, the kind of fiber that somebody is going to process, the technology that they have with them and the they want to balance the production and that also matters, but uh, the production speeds can be varied. Next come sliver doubling machine. So, earlier the question that always comes to our mind is that why do you need two machines? Sliver lab machines and then ribbon lab machines, that is, sliver produce lab, again labs are produced lab again. So, you transform sliver to lab first stage, second stage you transform lab to lab, conversion is there. So, can we not have one single machine where we can form uniform lab, that is, whatever is being done by the sliver lab machine and ribbon lab machine, can their operations can be uh, merged together and we can have one single machine on which we will be able to produce a lab of similar quality. With that idea, the sliver doubling machines was developed and what we see here that construction wise the machines are basically same, that is you feed slivers from a draw frame now. So, that means, instead of feeding card sliver, we feed drawn sliver. That means, the material has already undergone little bit of drawing and therefore, the fibers are little bit more parallel and oriented in the feed material. And what we do in this case that we double 32 slivers. So, large number slivers are doubled together. So, you may feed 16 and 16 each here and 32 slivers are fed and then we have a machine construction wise is more or less similar that is we have two drafting head like in shown in this diagram and then from there the waves which are generated after drafting or the sheet that you generate, we combine them again in sandwich fashion and then they are converted into a final lap. So, that is what we do on the sliver doubling machine, that is slivers, drawn slivers are taken and more number of slivers are combined together. The rest of the machine construction remains almost similar and we combine the drafted 
sheet of fibers that we get from each head together and we make the final lab out of it. So, in one stage we can produce the lab in this case and this lab is good enough from, from the quality point of view which can be fed on comber. The diagram on the right hand side shows that how the placement of saliva can affect the quality. See in this case we see the saliva when they are feeding they must touch each other. There should not be gap between the two saliva as is shown in this case it is not the correct way because you see the gaps between the saliva are there. So, that means in this case the lab that is going to be produced, then there will be thin regions across the width of the lab sheet. So, to avoid that, uh, we have to make sure the saliva are placed in this manner. This kind of placement is also not good, where the saliva are too close to each other and they may override, so one can go on the top of the other. So, too close placement is also not good fibers having spaces between them also not correct. So, what is correct is as shown on the top diagram this is the fiber placement because this little care we have to take when we actually process the fibers of the machines. Otherwise, there will be the quality of the fiber lap will suffer and as a result combing operation is going to suffer. Lap preparation technique Conventional technique is lab doubling process, which consists of basically curd, curding means curd saliva we produce followed by the saliva goes to saliva lab machine and from saliva lab machine it goes to ribbon lab machine and then it goes to the combing machine. So, this kind of process is conventional technique which is called lab doubling process because on the ribbon lab machine we are actually doubling the lab not the saliva. That is why the name has been given lab doubling. And in the case of saliva doubling which is a more or modern process curd followed by draw frame. So, one passage is given to the draw frame on draw frame then saliva that we you know, we produce on draw frame they are fed to the saliva doubling machines. So, saliva doubling machine construction wise this machine and this machines are more or less similar everything is slimmer. So, here we produce directly the lap and these laps are then fed to the comber. Because of the improvement in the, the construction of the machine improvement in the overall you know, quality of the different rotating elements the lab that we can produce directly they are good enough to be fed to the combing machine. So, this process is becoming more popular now, but there are many mills where the previous process that is lab doubling process is also followed. This process is especially followed when you want to process long fibers or that is we want to go for finer mixings. In that case Many a times the saliva lab and ribbon lab, these two machines are used to produce the labs. But and for coarse are mixing, usually this process is followed, but there are many mills which will be following this process also, that is saliva doubling process for even uh, processing finer fibers or finer mixings. Here we give you the calculation of draft. Sometimes we need to know how much draft is required. So, if you want to calculate the draft that we required, then we need to know these three values of these three parameters. Required draft is number of slivers doubled that you want to double, sliver linear density and the bat weight, bat weight is nothing but basically the 
linear density of the lab is also known as bar to it. So, I can write it here this is basically lab linear density. The lab is also called bar by many people or uh, in many textbook you may find it, but it is basically the linear density of the lab. So, if we have these values that is the what is the lab linear density you are going to produce and if we know the individual saliva linear density and the number of saliva that we have to double, then we can find out how much draft is required. Accordingly, the draft can be set on the machine or vice versa if we know the draft already set on the machines and you want to find out the linear density of the lab, then we can we can you know, bring linear the, the lab linear density here and total draft will be at the denominator, we can find out what is the lab linear density that we require. So, this is the relationship between total drop, number of slivers being double, sliver linear density and the lab linear density. If we want to know how many fibers are there in the cross section of the lab, then this is the formula that can be used that is the bar weight in gram per meter into 25400 divided by the micronear value of cotton. This will give you the number of fibers which are there in the cross sections of the lab. It is expected that the more fibers are there in the cross sections, more uniform the sheet is going to be. So, sometimes this uh, information could be useful uh, in the industry and therefore, this formula also we should know. There is one problem that usually we find during combing operation which is known as lap leaking. This lap leaking on the combing machine is because of something going wrong with the preparation of the lap in the previous process. So, if the lap leaks, now what is lap leaking? If I want to show you when this sheet is unrolled what happens is this that some fibers from the top part of the sheet is attached with this lab. The, the, and this you can see here there are a lot of fibers which are actually bridging this part and this part. This bridging fibers we call it leaking of the lab they create problem in the sense that the sliver that we produce on the combing machine will be highly non-uniform if this kind of bridging of fibers are there. So, this we need to avoid. So, while unwinding the individual layer of lap sheet, the sheet may stick to each other, the fibers may stick to each other and which is known as lap leaking. This creates actually disturbance in combing as I said it may lead to basically unevenness in the saliva that we produce on combing machines. So, how to avoid this? To avoid it we need to form self isolating layer. This is because this layer and the previous layer are sticking to each other. The reason is this fibers of this layer and the fibers of the previous layer they are sticking to each other. To avoid this a random arrangement of fibers on the lap surface results in the formation of such layer. When the fibers becomes too parallel to each other then this tendency is more, but if the fibers in the sheet is too parallel 
or then there is tendency that the fibers of the two layers will get stuck to each other. So, to avoid that we have to it is better to have the random arrangement of fibers on the sheet. So, avoid is I have to create isolating layers. How do I do it? A random arrangement of fiber on the left sheet will create such kind of layer. And therefore, what we need to do that we all know that the fibers are much randomly arranged in card fiber. The more draft we give to this fiber, the more parallel the fibers becomes. So, if I give less draft, the fibers will be less parallel. So, if we want to create a layer where fibers are less parallel, so that I can avoid such phenomena, in that case I have to give less draft. Therefore, we have to give less draft during the preparation of the lab and you will see the kind of draft that we give during lab preparation is much low because we want to maintain this uh, random arrangement of fibers where the fibers are less parallel. That is the lab surface should not be too smooth, the fibers should not be too parallel to each other and thus a low draft helps that is what I was narrating that we have to give basically less draft that is the only way by which we can keep the fibers less parallel in the sheet or in the sliver. So, therefore, the dot values are generally less during preparation of the lab and that is the end of this lecture. Thank you.